It's known as a LC circuit. And that's kind of interesting. You put a capacitor with an inductor. And again, you're going to see this in the lab on uh, Thursday. So let's look at logically first. Now, I'm going to assume that the resistor in this uh, circuit is negligible, even though the inductor will have its own resistance. If there is an external resistor, then it'll be an LCR circuit, and it's going to look like damped harmonic motion. It's going to go back and forth, but it will damp. The resistor will dampen the circuit. So we're not going to study those ones very detail. But when we go to chapter 33, we'll put LC and resistor, and we'll study uh, AC circuit with LCR, OK? So what we're doing now is a DC circuit. DC LC circuit where the resistor is negligible. So R is approximately 0, let's say. So what happens? Well, when you close it, notice, remember the C and the uh, L have different uh, attitudes to things. The C says, OK, I like, uh, charge me up. This one says, no, no, man. All of a sudden, you're introducing a voltage. I don't like that, OK? So uh, the voltage across the inductor should uh, go down. It should start high, go down, right? The voltage across the capacitor should say, the capacitor should say, come, come. I want to get charged up. Pretty much that makes sense, huh? But look what happened. That's not the end of the story. Uh, okay. After the capacitor gets charged, the capacitor now says, here's back your current. Okay? Here, here it is back to you. So the capacitor now drives the current, and the inductor says, oh no, not again. Here we go, here I go all over again. So the inductor now gets charged. And the capacitor now discharges. Okay. And the, uh, and the capacitor, then the capacitor, uh, so the inductor charges, then the inductor discharges. As a matter of fact, if we do the, this is the absolute value I'm doing. If we do the actual, it'll, it's going to be, now, uh, the inductor should look something like this. Um, that one just is the absolute value. The inductor should behave like this. Down, up, down, up, down, up. And then you'll see that in the lab on uh, Thursday. So discharge, charge, discharge, charge, discharge, charge. They keep, they keep cycling back and forth to each other, giving charge to each other and discharging, charging, discharging, even though this is a DC circuit. It's still, a, it's still not an AC. The battery is still DC. OK? So why is that? Let's look at the equations now. OK, so let's look at the equations. So again, it's going to be VC plus VL equals VB. Vc is Q over V. This one is uh, um, Vc is uh, Q over uh, C. Remember the original definition of C is Q over V. So Vc is going to be Q over C. Vl is going to be L di dt, right? OK. So. Again, it's a differential equation. This is the second derivative of that. OK? So it's got, it looks like this. L d squared q dt, second derivative, plus 1 over cq is equal to vb. So you have the function, something times the function, plus second derivative, uh, uh, something times the second derivative, is equal to some constant. What function satisfies this?
what function is there whose second derivative added to it times some constants gives you a constant? It's a trig function, cosine sine. Okay? So it's a, it behaves way different than a LR circuit or a RC circuit. The, a solution to this is now a sine cosine function. So I can say Q is equal to Q0, let's say, times sine of omega t plus phi. The phi, just the initial charge. It's based on the initial charge. Uh, let's say the initial charge is zero, so the phi will just be zero. So let's, so let's just go like that. So when you put t equal to zero, you get uh, zero. So Q zero is going to represent the maximum charge uh, on the capacitor. Maximum charge on the capacitor. What's the maximum charge on the capacitor going to be? Well, we could do that kind of logically. Well, if the maximum charge here is going to be C times the voltage of the battery, right? So Q max, C times voltage of battery. So I would expect the QM to be CVB, C, uh, C of the capacitor times uh, voltage of the battery. Now what's left for us to do? We know this uh, sine function satisfies that. We already established the initial condition. The initial charge is going to be 0. We know that the maximum charge is CVB. The rest of the mystery is what's the W? How, what's the rate at which they will transfer energy to each other? Okay. So now we need to take the second derivative of this. The first derivative gives you CVB omega cosine omega t. The second derivative gives you uh, CVB omega squared sine omega t. Okay, so now we put that into the differential equation, L times CVB omega squared sine omega t plus 1 over C times the charge. Well, well 1 over C times the, char uh, the charge, the C cancels, right? So just VB is equal to VB. So it's left with LC VB omega squared plus VB is equal to uh, times sine of omega t is equal to VB. But it should just be a constant, right? So uh, therefore, this thing here Uh, therefore, the LC W squared No, there was something I did something. Uh, there's a little bit of a sign error here uh, The sign the derivative of that is cosine the derivative of that is negative sign Okay, so I need a, a negative sign right here So when you factor the sign out I get uh, negative here, negative here. So this needs to be equal uh, zero. I actually, no, this needs to equal. No, it needs to equal zero so that it has no time dependence, right? But it doesn't satisfy. Uh, let me see. 